Good morning, AI community, and welcome to sunny Los Angeles, California. We are here for a full day of coverage at Teradata Possible, and I am personally very excited. My name is Savannah Peterson, delighted to be joined by Rob Streche. You're a pro here at this show, and I'm just getting my first taste. I, I, I love this show because I've been around Teradata as an end user in the community for a while and seen it grow up uh, and grow out as it has expanded and really actually focused. And I, I think that's really coming out of the keynotes was really one of the big keys that I took away mm -hmm. and really over last year at Orlando to this year. So really good stuff. Yeah, I'm excited to learn with you today, Rob. And speaking of keynotes, the man himself, Steve, thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's my pleasure to be here. Great. Squeezing us in your very busy schedule, standing room only in the keynote this morning. Very impressive. What's it like for you to see your whole community and team here this week? Look, I th this event for us is probably one of the most important things we do every single year. It's great to see all of our customers, partners, our friends um, interact with us. Um, we get to show off our most recent technology announcements, but I had the pleasure of just recapping the journey that Teradata has been on over the last four years since I joined, uh, which, was, which was awesome to really set that into context and then how we see Teradata moving forward into the future. Yeah, it, could, oh, sorry. Go for it. Yeah, because I, I think what was exciting is, you know, having been in Orlando last year and now in LA, a little closer to your home, I guess you could say, but it's, it's, a, it's really, uh, what was the key was last year it was about cloud and how you're making things go faster on cloud. This year, again, you, you started to move down away from just the software aspect and the cloud aspect into the platform aspect. Yeah. Kind of give us kind of that journey and how you've been focusing the company. Yeah, I think, um, you know, when I joined four years ago, I wanted to say what the company would be as we move forward and also what we weren't going to be. Um, and I think Teradata has always been a fantastic technology company. We were founded on some just awesome patents. Uh, for the audience that may not know, it was actually a, a collaboration between Caltech and Citibank that spun out the Teradata technology. In the 70s. Um, in the 70s, yes. Yeah, it's impressive. I have the, the pleasure of running a company with a strong heritage. Yes. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I said we were going to really focus back onto our technology roots. At our core, we're a technology company. Um, but I know that the secret sauce that we've developed and the patents that we've developed over time are all contained within our software. Um, and every great software company is a platform company. And to your point, I think focus is really important. Um, being a platform company means that we don't need to be all things to all people. We can bring the best of other capabilities in the world and combine it with the Teradata software platform to get unique business outcomes that nobody else can deliver in our opinion. I, well, I think that's clear. I'm excited for you to share some examples for us of that. We'll get into that in just a second. But I do want to talk about that transformation. I mean, founded in 1979, Teradata is older than I am. And, <laughs> and, to, and But when we think of legacy companies, we don't always think of them as being on the cutting edge of tech. And I say mm. that with love. Y'all have evolved and morphed a lot over the last few, well, over the last few decades, but in particular, since you joined, can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing to address the AI hype and bubble that's going on right now? Yeah, so I think um, it's, it's super interesting. Uh, the word legacy is fantastic in nearly every single context, apart from IT. Right, uh, <laughs> yes, legacy <laughs> systems are like, give everyone However, an anxiety attack. Um, what we've done inside Teradata is really build on that legacy of knowledge, capability, technology, innovation that uh, we started off with. And when you think about the new world from an AI perspective, so advanced analytics is the overall category, AI ML is a subset, Gen AI is a subset of the AI category. Um, all of the workloads that run inside a Gen AI and an AI environment operate at tremendous scale. You just need to look at ChatGPT and look, think about how many parameters is ChatGPT processing now, billions of parameters, I think. And the inference engine that, around, that goes around that means that you have to operate at tremendous scale. Now, when Teradata was founded, and our core technology is based on a massively parallel computing architecture, it enabled us um, to deliver you know, enterprise-scale data warehouse capabilities way back, to your point, in the early 80s. Yeah, which yeah. is impressive, though. Absolutely. I mean, that's why you're still here today. And we've been able to take that technology and take that architecture and apply it to solving the problems that AI and Gen AI generate inside organizations. You know, when we think about AI workloads, 
um, we think about three characteristics that they need to operate well. One is you've got to be really trusted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that whole hallucination, um, you know, badly training your model, uh, not training on the right data results in that lack of trust. Mm -hmm. And um, so we have a focus inside Teradata to ensure that our platform enables our um, uh, technologists and business users to start to trust the output that comes from that Gen AI solution set. And then the second thing is, um, it's got to be ethical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you know, how do you eliminate bias? Yeah, and so, you know, a lot of capability has been built over time around model ops. So how do you actually evaluate a model and make sure that you're not introducing bias into do, that model? Do you model? think it's possible to actually completely eliminate bias? Well, that's why I think when you're looking at bias, you have to have a human-centric approach to AI. Mm -hmm. um, because, uh, and I think some of the examples that we gave um, in our keynotes were pointed to uh, the importance of having that human still involved in uh, that AI and Gen AI um, interaction, we see that in our customers today. A number of the banks that we interact with, as an example, um, they will use Gen AI to augment a call center specialist, but not to replace the call center specialist. Right. Because they want to keep that human still in the loop. 100%. Because many times, folks want to talk to a real person. Yeah. And, it goes back um, to that trust piece you mentioned yeah. earlier. And Radhika this morning in our uh, opening session pointed to some really bad mistakes that have been made in terms of uh, some unfortunate customer interactions that can generate. So that trusted um, ethical is super important. But then the last thing is sustainable. Um, you know, I spoke on stage. Um, we had a fantastic announcement with Microsoft um, earlier this year with our AI Unlimited engine running in Microsoft Fabric. I had a picture of Satya with the Teradata Good logo behind him. Um, now it's interesting that Satya uh, and Microsoft have just announced that they're looking to reinstate Three Mile Island and uh, fire up one of the atomic uh, generators again so that they can power their data centers. Oh, so wow. the third thing that we think about is how can you run these models sustainably? Yep, so. It's critical I, right now. If you think about the energy usage predictions for um, these huge inference engines, you start to get to the point of, uh, you've got to be able to run it efficiently and effectively. And you know the real magic of Teradata is our massively parallel architecture and the way that we orchestrate workloads enables us to run complex AI and Gen AI workloads just as well on a CPU infrastructure as they can run on a GPU infrastructure. And that's a massive leap ahead for us. That's huge, and that, that creates an entirely new offering that is more sustainable and cost effective for your customers. I think, I think people are getting a little GPU blinded to a degree where we're mm -hmm. not realizing that it's not always going to have to be this huge lift from that processing moment, but that it's actually going to be about inference that makes it real time. Yeah, I, th I think, um, uh, one of the great things that we are announcing today, actually, is our new partnership with uh, NVIDIA. Clearly, a, um, I think, accelerated compute provider, um, a GPU provider, um, but imagine the possibilities of combining our software and orchestration capabilities with the GPU infrastructure and the ability to run those inference engines even more effectively, even more efficiently. And so we are super excited about that partnership, what that can bring, how that can deliver to our customers. Yeah, I, I think that to me is why, uh, and I think you, know, you had the New York Giants on stage with you. Again, big fan of the NFL myself, not to mention F1 that you mentioned earlier, but I think the, bringing those use cases back to customers is one of the big things yeah. that people look to. And I think one of the things the Giants talked about was the fact that you didn't force them to move all their data one way or the other in coordination with, I mean, you're working with all of the cloud vendors with AWS, Microsoft, and Google, but they were talking about how they were leveraging yeah. AWS. Has that really been like one of the keys that's helped drive those use cases with customers like the F1 and the banks and things of that nature? Yeah, I think if you, um, if you just think how we progressed our cloud business over the last four years, we're taking it to over half a billion dollars, hundreds and hundreds of our customers in the cloud <laughs> now. So, well done. you know, I think if only we were valued as a startup, we would, um, <laughs> uh, we would be getting some significant Especially advantage in this AI there. Era. Yeah. Um, but I think the, the reason that we've been able to build that business is because we took a very different approach. Um, you know, our Teradata approach in the past has been bring all of your data into our ecosystem. But we've recognized the fact that, you know, data is going to be all 
uh, in many places in the customer ecosystem, and we should move this, the query engine to the data rather than moving the data to the query engine, which is a very, very different approach. Yeah, it's a patented capability that we have in, say, the Teradata ecosystem that allows us to distribute that workload. And we talk about meeting our customers where they want to be met. Um, so F1 is a great example of that. If you imagine um, they don't have time at a race to upload video to the cloud, um, process that, that video in the cloud with telemetry data from the track real time, they wanted a track side appliance um, that can run um, at the track, at the race, to give real-time insights, real-time recommendations, ultimately look at how to make the car faster on track. Um, and so that's a great example of meeting the customer where they want to be met. Um, at the edge in this case, at too. At the edge. At the uh, fastest edge, yeah, really. exactly. <laughs> oh, that's cool to think about. And then uh, we have um, healthcare organizations that you know, we, we love working with healthcare organizations around the world because you can really see the difference that it makes in people's lives. Yeah. Saves lives. Um, yeah, absolutely. Saving lives in real time. Yeah. yeah. So optimizing a supply chain. You know, we're working with a number of uh, healthcare providers. One of them is illustrated on the screen behind you, <laughs> um, talking about Premier and uh, how they optimize their uh, supply chain, um, how they run that in the cloud to really deliver some significant uh, uh, results and outputs. So different examples around the world. You know, we moved, recently moved American Airlines, their entire on-premise Teradata environment uh, to Azure. And uh, once we'd migrated the, the uh, entire Teradata environment, controlling many of their different capabilities um, inside American Airlines, we, um, they phoned up their end users and said, how, how does this, is it, do you notice anything different about the system? And they said, it seems to be running quicker. <laughs> um, uh, which That's is just good. the migration story yes. that you want to hear. Amazing, yeah. yeah. So. But, but I, I think one of the things, because you know, I, I, I know time is tight with you, and I, I think one of the big things, and I, you kind of hit upon it in the keynote as well, is really people are, are struggling with the ROI mm -hmm. of AI or the ROAI. Yeah. Uh, how do you see, because you're talking to a lot of executives, when you're having those conversations, how do you help them really see into the future of how they're going to get from POC to production. Yeah, like I think uh, you know if you look at the most recent Gartner hype cycle, it says yeah. Gen AI has fallen into that trough for disillusionment. But actually, I was talking to one of our uh, banking customers in Australia, <laughs> where they said it is not in a trough of uh, disillusionment inside my company. But I think what we're seeing is the battle of the language models has begun, but it has not played out yet. Um, I think the ability to use a large language model, a medium language model, and a small language model for different types of solutions inside our customers is really going to help transform how they think about it. And when I talk to customers, I think about um, how they're deploying their advanced analytics and AI capabilities in kind of three horizons. The first horizon is um, effectiveness and efficiency, like a co-pilot. Use mm -hmm. a Microsoft co-pilot, you know, help me write a presentation or an email, whatever that may be. The second horizon is how do you embed um, AI in your product or service? Um, and you know, we heard from uh, Russell from the New York Giants talking about uh, he sees that as his next step. How does he use language models for inference, a small language model trained on specific data for an outcome? And then the third horizon, which I think can be the most exciting, is how can you use AI to transform your industry? And we had Unilever on stage with us in London last year, uh, where Andy, their chief data officer, was talking about, he sees a time where his merchandising team and the buyer team from an organization like Walmart is essentially two bots interacting with each other. Um, and I thought that made me really think about, um, it's almost like the transformation we had in the financial markets when they moved towards high velocity trading. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? Exactly. So it's the battle of the algo, yeah. but now it's going to be the battle of the bullet. So I think that should be, that should be pretty interesting. Yeah. I right. think that's going to be fascinating. What else can we expect from our future? Uh, <laughs> look, I am, I'm always the optimist. Yes, so, I love that. I can feel that energy uh, sitting so, next uh, to you I, 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 When I look at, you know, when, just as a small example, when we move customers uh, from their on-prem systems into the cloud with us, it frees up resources in our customers to add more value. Absolutely. And I think um, the, the AI wave, the Gen AI wave, is going to help uh, unleash more and more creativity. You could almost call it the era of creativity that we're entering into now, where you, know, you can essentially outtask, outsource your uh, more menial tasks, 
and you can focus on you know how do we more, be more creative? How do we think of it more of advanced yes. problem solving? And I think ultimately that will be more fulfilling for everybody. You know, everybody talks about well, is AI going to take away people's jobs? Um, but you know, you look at all of the automation that went into the automotive industry with robotic uh, yeah. manufacturing lines. In fact, we've got a great solution <laughs> ensuring quality control for robotic uh, manufacturing lines. But actually, what it did, it actually accelerated the automotive industry and it accelerated the innovation mm -hmm. in that industry. And if you look broader, it actually increased the employment ratios for uh, automobiles worldwide. So. I think that's the kind of uh, future that we're looking with as we embrace these technologies. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think that AI is not going to take our jobs, it's going to make our jobs more purposeful, more yeah. fun, and give us higher quality time for strategy and creativity. All right, I have one last question for you because time actually really flew by in this segment. What is there, if you could tell the world one thing they might not know about Teradata because they're familiar with you mm -hmm. as a legacy company, but maybe not you today, what would you want them to know? Look, over the last um, 40 years, but especially in the last four years, we've been able to pivot the company to develop a trusted hybrid platform for AI at scale. And we are delivering those solutions right here, right now today, leveraging the partnerships that we've just announced with folks like NVIDIA, leveraging our partnerships with Dell for on-premise capabilities, utilizing all the things that we know about on-prem technologies, but then working with AWS, Azure, Google to deliver that capability in the cloud is super exciting. Okay, I actually have one more question for you because I want to be able to leverage this when we get to interview you next year at this event. What do you hope to be able to say when we're, wherever that might be, not sure if you've selected your city, that you can't say today? That's a really good question. I think um, what we're really looking for is that AI impact and the workload impact from an AI perspective. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I talked about if we were a startup in the cloud world, what would be valued at? But <laughs> if we can really leverage the AI capabilities in our massively parallel architecture, our core technologies around workload management, query optimization, to really deliver um, in that AI world, I think it's going to make a massive difference to the company. Well, we can't wait to talk about it with you next year. Maybe get some of those customers up here. Now I want to go watch a race. Maybe get some F1 going on. <laughs> Steve, thank you so much for taking the time. It's been with a us pleasure. Today. Thank Especially you so on, like, much. Especially on your most popular day of the year. Rob, always a treat to sit Thanks. up here with you. And thank Thanks, all Rob. of you for tuning in, wherever you might be on this beautiful rock. We're in Los Angeles, California, here for Teradata Possible. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.